thank you very much. And thank you also to the organizer for giving me this opportunity. So, um, yeah, in my title you see three words, uh, but uh, in fact, uh, what I really like is the resurgence, the middle one. And uh, what I would like to understand and also try to explain today is a kind of idea how uh, resurgence and how much resurgence knows uh, about uh, modularity. And yeah, so in particular, what I was uh, working on, uh, also discussing with Maxime and more recently with Claudia Rella, is uh, studying uh, resurgence of divergent series, which arise uh, from some Q series, and then uh, um, trying to understand uh, if uh, the resummation is in a sense related to uh, quantum modularity. And uh, um, in fact, more generally, what I would like, uh, what I will propose uh, in uh, my talk today is an attempt to give a general picture where you can expect uh, quantum modularity. So a, a general resurgence structure from which you maybe can always uh, find quantum modular form. But actually, in um, my main example of this talk, uh, we will rather go uh, in the opposite direction. So in a sense, uh, the example I will consider, we already know that there is a quantum modular form. And so the question will be more like, uh, can uh, this modularity property tell me something about uh, uh, the resurgence structure uh, associated to a certain Q series? But before going to the example, um, I would like to start uh, like brief recalling some idea related to resurgence and uh, Borella plus amability. So as we have already seen in this workshop several times, uh, uh, very often we deal with uh, divergent series. And in fact, what we would like to do is to extract uh, some uh, um, like analytic function out to something that behaves uh, uh, not really nicely, so in particular, a series was typically coefficient growth factorially fast. And the first thing you can do if you encounter this uh, divergent series is first to consider a Borel transformer, which is uh, a purely formal procedure that divides out your uh, divergence. And this typically give you a germ of analytic function in this variable zeta. So here you are in what is called the Borel plane. So uh, this zeta plane, you have a finite stages of convergence and you may have uh, this cross are the, the singularity. And so what you start to do is now uh, trying to do the analytic continuation of this function. And the hope is to find like a region when you can actually take uh, uh, this ray that goes through infinity in some direction and where the function is uh, um, actually analytically, but not only that, it also must have some nice uh, decay condition. Because if that happens, you, you are allowed to take this Laplace transform, and as a result, you will get an analytic function, analytic in uh, some, up, uh, some half plane related to the direction of theta. And what is the relation between the analytic function you, you get and the original divergent series is through uh, what is called Gevre asymptotic. And then, uh, uh, I mean, this will be an analytic function in this sector, but when you start varying this angle, actually you uh, will understand how to also extend this uh, analytic function. And every time you uh, will cross one of these singularity, typically this uh, will jump and you will see the Stokes phenomena we have uh, also discussed in this talk. But in fact, uh, um, so uh, this is called the like, paradigm of Borella plus amability. But sometimes uh, uh, what I think is interesting to consider is also example in which you actually have an analytic object uh, at the beginning. So you, you actually start with some analytic function and then uh, you study the asymptotic. And it may happen that the asymptotic is a divergent series. This is, for instance, the example of the gamma function that Maxime presented, or um, more general for exponential integral. This is uh, what happened. And so the idea is, OK, now I got something divergent. I can try to apply again my uh, paradigm of Borella plus some ability. But so I will get another analytic object somewhere. And are these two things uh, uh, equal or somehow how do are they related in some way? And uh, uh, in fact, uh, what you know a priori is just that they have the same asymptotic. But this somehow is not enough. And we have a good result, which is the vanilla theorem which actually tells us, OK, yes, these are going to be the same if uh, you have uh, a good control on the asymptotic. But more generally, um, 
what you should do is first uh, kind of uh, relax the definition of the Laplace transform you want to consider. And in fact, uh, in the example that we will see today, this is not really enough. So in a sense, uh, if you start with, if you have at the beginning an object, which is quite nice, maybe not exactly analytic, but in a sense more regular, and you start computing asymptotic and doing this procedure, you will not get back exactly the same object. You have to modify it in some way. And uh, um, maybe I should also say that another other example in which you can instead close the diagram are in a sense exponential integral, but also solution of linear ODE. But okay, so uh, this is kind of the true paradigm that uh, uh, we may consider. And where does the resurgence come from? Precisely, uh, in a way, you can relax uh, uh, this definition of the Laplace transform. So here is like the definition of uh, resurgence function, as uh, David also explained us today. So I'm not going to uh, read it all and explain. Uh, what I really uh, need is if you want the first line. So a function, now I'm in the Borel plane, it's a resurgent if it can be endlessly uh, analytically continued. And uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, dealing with the fact that you want to endlessly analytic continue the you can endlessly analytic continue the function, in a sense, it tells you that you can allow more general set of singularity. So, in a sense, the set of singularity can also be dense. But because, as David was explaining yesterday, in fact, they live on different sheet of the Riemann, of your Riemann surface. And moreover, what is important to me is that the Borel plane, in a sense. Uh, knows all the information, meaning that uh, if your goal is always to find some analytic object behind your divergent series, <coughs> once you apply the Borel transform, if uh, you get something which is resurgent, it means that you can study the Borel plane with the tool developed by ECAL, and this uh, um, already contains all the information. So it will tell you how your analytic uh, function will jump and it will be defined uh, on the original h-bar plane. And this is how these alien calculus uh, and also media Laplace resummation or all these versions, in a sense, of uh, uh, Laplace transform are more powerful and uh, very well uh, uh, defined to work uh, when you have a resurgent function. So my point is really, if you have a resurgent function, essentially, really what you have, uh, it's a great knowledge of the Borel plane and all this machinery helps you somehow to um, avoid all the condition that you need uh, in order to take uh, the usual Laplace transform. You can uh, actually deal with much more general object. If you had the no Laplace transform of phi, what is hat? Hat, uh, ah, sorry, hat is the Borel transform. Borel. Ah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Before was G. Thanks. Okay, so um, let me give again an example of uh, uh, a, what is called a simple resurgent function. Again, Maxime already gave this, and it appears several times this week. So if you consider a singular point uh, of your uh, initial germ G, this has a simple resurgence structure if uh, uh, it has the following uh, behavior. So in particular, you may have a simple pole, and then you have a log time uh, another germs, and maybe uh, plus some holomorphic function. And uh, um, this structure is quite interesting because, in fact, uh, um, the idea is uh, at the beginning you have your finite rays of convergence, you find a singularity. If uh, at the singularity your germs behave like that, now here you can start playing with this other uh, object, with this other germ, and, keep, and so you can start uh, to study it, the singularity of this phi at. And if you find another point, uh, we, this will give access to a different uh, uh, region of the Borel plane, and you can um, continue studying all these uh, uh, germs. And in fact, if your function uh, is uh, uh, resurgent, in a sense, it's like that all these uh, uh, germs uh, know each other. So for instance, if you only have a finite number of singularity, as in the case of um, ordinary differential equation, you can consider, the same, uh, for example, the IRI equation, and you will have only two of this germ. And if you, once you have found the first one, you expand, you find the other one, and that's it. And if you consider the second one and you expand again, you will get back uh, uh, the original one. So there is really a very nice structure. But in fact, what is important here uh, is that all the ingredients you need to reconstruct your analytic object 
are already there, and in particular are this constant uh, CNS as well as this germ. And um, why I say that? Because if you now want to go back to the original H bar play, we are going to take some Laplace transform, and in a sense, uh, uh, this will give you just a constant. But here you will see uh, that this log uh, will give you this constant as well as this germ. So this is like the information that also uh, Marcos Marinho was considering speaking about uh, the resurgent structure. So since this is the important information that we need, let me just uh, recall the definition that Marcos was saying. So a resurgent structure for me will be a collection of singularity, this set uh, omega, a collection of germs, and uh, uh, the Stokes constant. And for Marcos, uh, the only dif the dif difference was that he puts together like the collection of germ with the singularity. So in a sense, uh, it's just one function. And I'd like to keep them separate because in a sense, I am I'm kind of implicitly, uh, implicitly assuming some uh, um, normalization condition. So in particular, I always want this to be integer. OK. And uh, uh, now I'm going to introduce uh, a sort of proposal for a different type of uh, resurgent uh, structure, what I will call a modular uh, resurgent structure. So essentially, I specify um, the data of the resurgent structure in the following way. So I would like to have a tower of singularity. Here you have an example. It's horizontal and not vertical. But the point is that uh, all these points like, are separated by some uh, integer m. And you may have infinitely many. Um, all the germ are one. So in a sense, it's a quite simple uh, resurgent structure. I mean, even simpler than the one of before, because either you have only log singularity or actually only simple pole. And finally, uh, I would like to have that, that my Stokes constant gives me an L function when I uh, write them in this way. So I do not specify uh, which type of L function. I mean, there are many. Usually, it's uh, maybe Dirichlet L function, uh, Artin L function. I leave it on purpose a bit vague, because we will see an example we can have both. And uh, so yeah, so far, let's leave it uh, in this way. Why this is uh, a nice, uh, uh, I mean, kind of nice definition is, well, because in fact, you can construct an example in which uh, this happened to be the case, so in which you have this uh, modular resurgent structure. And here you have an example. So for instance, uh, imagine that you, pick, uh, you consider an L function of uh, the type you like, uh, and also you consider a set of points, uh, uh, like a tower, OK, as I was writing before. And then uh, uh, you construct your divergent power series. So B every 1 means that this coefficient um, have to grow factorially fast. And you assume that the coefficient actually look like that. So up to a constant, you have a factorial growth, and then you put this uh, um, sum. OK, now the claim is that if you consider the Borel transform of this uh, divergent series, it has a modular resurgence structure. And what does it mean? It means that the Stokes constant will be exactly this SK, and the position of the singularity will be exactly this uh, rho k. So how do you check this? In this case, it's, quite, it's really uh, simple. You, you consider the Borel transform, meaning you divide it by this factorial, and this gives you an n, and you change the variable. And then uh, the only um, things you have to uh, think a little bit about is you want to exchange uh, these two uh, summation. So actually, this is also an infinite summation. And so what you have to, ch in this case, you can actually do, because thanks to the Gevray property, you know that this is going to be something convergent. So if you permute the true sum, uh, then you will get the geometric, in this case, actually, you will get a log up to some correction. So you see, you can recognize here exactly the uh, same uh, um, simple resurgent structure I was discussing before. And you, so you don't have any other function here. So that's it, in a sense. You only have this log singularity. You see that the position of the singularity is exactly the, ro the rho k, because it's where this uh, uh, has a singularity. And the Stokes constant are precisely written uh, in front of it, up to some normalization. Yeah, it looks, it have function at all. It's kind of exactly what it is. 
Uh, no, this isomorphic function is just because I would get like rho divided by, so uh, zeta divided by rho k. Okay. And so I just put maybe, this is just a constant, I think it's not even, I think it's just a constant, yes, yes. Okay, so this is an example. Actually, you can do also something slightly different. So in a sense, you can replace this factorial with uh, uh, maybe a gamma shifted by some uh, uh, rash, positive rational number. So if you, again, you do the same game, and now you assume that your coefficient look like that. What, what is Gevray? Ah, yes, Gevray 1 means that the coefficient Cn grows factorially fast. So maybe, yeah, uh, maybe a to the n and factorial for n large. And uh, yeah. OK. So I even if you consider something slightly different, uh, you will get again uh, a modular uh, resurgence structure. And the, you do exactly the same computation. The only difference here is that you don't have any log or simple pole. You actually have some uh, square root uh, or like different type of singularity. And uh, uh, but so you can still see that the uh, singular point are at rho k. And about the Stokes constant here, um, to, to see that they are exactly this as k, you have to mm, like compute the monodromy. So you just do a loop around the singularity. And in fact, uh, uh, they, they will be up to some maybe different, con slightly different constant, again, multiple of sk. So even in this case, we can say that the Stokes constant are always uh, uh, exactly the coefficient of this uh, function. OK. So we have these two examples, uh, but why we should care about uh, uh, these modular resurgence structures? So in fact, they appear in this context. But even more, what uh, I uh, would like to prove, and this is a sort of uh, general claim, is that if you consider a um, divergent power series with rational coefficient, which is Gevre 1, and whose Borel transform admit, uh, here I'm adding simple modular resurgence structure, and by simple, I mean that I have only simple pole or log singularity. Then uh, taking some generalized Laplace transform, so meaning that uh, I take this integral, but I, on purpose, I do not specify the path here. Then it defines some quantum modular form. So in particular, if you take F tau to be this generalized Laplace transform, but now where h bar becomes 2 pi i tau, this is a quantum modular form, uh, meaning that if you define it for um, tau rational, you have this uh, type of transform. So f of tau plus 1 goes uh, in something like that. And in particular, this m should be related to the uh, distance I have in my tower of singularity. And then uh, for some uh, SL to Z transformation, uh, you, you, you would expect that if you take the difference of this and this other function, what is here, this h gamma tau, which is usually called the co-cycle, is going to be defined over r, smooth, but real analytic uh, except uh, um, a finite set of points. Typically, yeah, the pre-image of infinity, or maybe even you have to remove maybe even zero. OK. Um, so the idea is, here again, it's not really precise, uh, and in fact, uh, um, I should say that in the example of yesterday, uh, in William talk, what he was uh, said, um, actually, he has, a, he has a theorem in which this path here, uh, it's uh, this, the one that gives you the median Laplace resummation. So it actually, in his example, he have a tower of singularity somewhere there, and the path he was considering was something like this like this. But I think, that, uh, as we will see in the example uh, later on, uh, um, it, it doesn't look always the case uh, to have uh, this simple path here. So the other remark I want to make is that uh, I think almost, I mean, at least in the example we consider, it's not enough uh, to take uh, the usual Laplace transform, where the usual Laplace tra transform, uh, now, my tower of singularity usually is here. So the usual Laplace transform uh, would be maybe integrating over there. 
this is typically not enough. Okay. So, uh, are there any questions about uh, that? Okay. Yeah, uh, what is the weight in your... One. Uh, weight one. Okay. Yeah, and indeed I think that in the example, uh, instead of uh, William and, uh, I mean, of you and your collaborator, it should be fractional weight. And, um, and yeah, it should also be related to the fact that the coefficient has a different growth. So you don't have uh, simple singularity, but I guess you will always have this fractional power. Because if I remember correctly, this that at series actually has, uh, also the Borel transform that you wrote down uh, yesterday has maybe a square root singularity, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I w indeed, uh, maybe one speculation, I mean, one further speculation can be that in the case you have uh, a square root uh, type of singularity, uh, you will get fractional uh, weight, but in that case, uh, maybe the counter will, uh, will be precisely this thing. So you will always do the manual summation. Maybe, yeah, so mm -hmm. for, yeah, for fractional weight, I guess uh, it, it could be reasonable that you always get this media summation. And I have another example in which you have the fractional uh, singularity, and indeed the media summation is what works well. Okay, so maybe now I will go on with the example. And the, so my main example is like the one uh, I was discussing with Maxime. And in this case, we have, uh, uh, we know that there is a quantum modular form. So here I just try to recap, uh, to recall some of the results we're knowing before due to these people. And uh, so first, the, we start with the Q series. So actually in this case, we have two Q series, uh, uh, sigma Q and sigma star Q. Uh, where do they come from? Actually it was Andrews that uh, considered them related to some combinatoric uh, problem like uh, counting partition. Um, but uh, I will just uh, look at the two expressions you have on the right hand side. So in particular, these are well defined and convergent uh, inside the unique disk. But uh, uh, most importantly, they also make sense uh, when you uh, consider Q at root of unity. And in particular, uh, they are actually related by this expression. So you have this equality. And then uh, what uh, Cohen did was actually to consider, so to define <coughs> some coefficient tk as the following uh, uh, coefficient. So the coefficient uh, of this uh, uh, Q series and uh, of the other one with the sigma star. And what he proved is actually, if you consider now the sum of all these coefficient uh, divided by k to the s, you have uh, an artinel function, which is defined in this way. Okay, so we start, in a sense, like we start seeing some of the ingredients that we may uh, need uh, later for our, to build our resurgent function. But in fact, uh, uh, most interesting, Daguerre, in his paper about uh, uh, quantum modular form, he, in, he defined a function f um, defined for q equal to pi i tau, so a root of unity tau equal to q. In particular, f can be defined uh, uh, equally as this series with the sigma or with the sigma star because of the previous equality. And what he proved, uh, and here I mean I add Maxim because he realized there was some mistake and so uh, there was an absolute value missing in the original paper, but okay. So it, def uh, it, it, it um, proved that this function satisfies this true relation, in, in particular the second one um, means that if you take the difference between this and this function, uh, this e to the 2 pi i 24 f tau, this co-cycle, it's real analytic, it's smooth and real analytic outside these two points. And uh, I mean, this is something that one can easily check from the uh, definition of this Q series. This uh, part here in uh, Zagier paper was proved uh, um, using mass form, but also using the property of the um, L function over there, in particular the functional equation that this satisfied. And uh, what it does is like to write this uh, uh, h tau in terms as an integral of some uh, um, mass form. So it's, it's purely analytic, uh, um, it's purely analytic proof. And now, okay, that's nice, but what we do now, it's time to introduce the divergent series. 
So what we consider is uh, now a formal uh, power series, which uh, look like uh, um, the F tau of Zagir, but now where uh, tau is h bar, um, yes, tau is h bar divided by two pi i, or maybe h bar is two pi i tau. Actually, even more general. So now h bar is just a complex parameter, but this is just to make the parallel with the previous definition. And if you expand these, uh, like we just add an h bar over there, but okay, if you expand this numerically, you see that uh, the coefficient are rational, and uh, uh, moreover that they grow factorially fast. So actually, from now on, uh, also the conjecture that you will see, it means that everything was checked numerically with a very good precision, but unfortunately, we don't have a close formula for this coefficient. So the first thing that we check numerically uh, is this type of relation. So the coefficient here grows factorially fast, and you will see uh, this tk, the, the same as before, here as coefficient, and divided by uh, this rho k. So now this, uh, as you may expect, uh, if you believe the conjecture, will be the position of the singularity and this uh, the Stokes constant. And uh, you can immediately see that uh, they are like uh, in a tower like that. Excuse me, it's a bit fast for me. No, yeah, sorry. You define the formal series by yes, yes. extracting the Taylor series from that series exactly. of functions. But as a series of functions, does it converge somewhere? Ah, no. Nowhere? I mean. Ah, nowhere. Uh, no, no, no. It's, uh, I mean, again, if you, um, we just put this in, in the computer and we start like extracting uh, at the coefficient and you see that they grow like this. I mean, if you want here, you can first put like uh, an asymptotic, like for large n, they look like this. When I was looking above, CN. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's the same. This CN, uh, I mean, it's just uh, uh, rewriting this formula. So if it's you just, so you, you a form. form. No, it's, it's, it's adequately convergent. Yes, series. it's a formally convergent series of Ad formal series. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. Yes. Each of these formal series is a function, but I'm, I'm asking whether there is anything analytic. I mean, these no, exponentials, no. do they make sense as a series of functions somewhere? No, in the unit disk, yeah. yeah. In the unit disk, yeah. but but here we're on the boundary of the unit disk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but yes. inside the unit disk, it's okay. Ah, yes, yes, inside. Okay, so yes, you are sorry. extracting the asymptotic expansion yeah, yeah. somehow. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, if we now assume that the coefficients are exactly of this form, we can uh, uh, compute the true Laplace transform, in particular in the vertical direction and in the horizontal, in the, sorry, um, yeah, vertical and uh, uh, the lower direction. You will, so, and this will define for you through um, analytic function, one in the, upper half, uh, in the upper half plane and the other one in the lower half plane. And in fact, uh, if you compute uh, um, the discontinuity, so you can actually understand how they jump across this ray and what you will see it's just a, a, a computing residue. So in particular, uh, like on the right, you will get exactly the singularity that you have on the right. And if you do uh, the other way around, you will see the negative one. And uh, um, these are actually also the trans-series type of expression that we have seen many times uh, uh, this week. So in particular, you have all the exponential with the position of the singularity divided by h bar. And uh, uh, these are the, the Stokes coefficient. I'm sorry, what is rho k in that example? Ah, sorry, rho k was a pa k pi, uh, this one, pi oh, square um, k over 12, yeah. <coughs> and moreover, um, if you look at this series, actually they more or less look like what uh, um, the, the series that define the coefficient tk, and in fact, uh, you can rewrite them, but in terms of q tilde series, where q tilde is uh, uh, e to the minus 2 pi i tau, div uh, sorry, divided by tau. So if you just specify h bar to be so if you use this uh, change of coordinate, sorry, okay, this transformation, it's bar equal to 2 pi i tau, you get back uh, uh, 
this Q tilde series uh, and uh, the Q tilde series also appeared in uh, Google of talk yesterday and you will see them later on. So in a sense, you have this type of transformation when the stocks constant uh, are in a sense, uh, and actually the discontinuity are, can be actually packed uh, in uh, a Q tilde series, uh, which is uh, again, kind of related to the original series sigma. <coughs> okay, and now, um, the second conjecture, so we have this Laplace transform. The question now is, uh, is it true that my uh, F tau is equal to this Laplace transform when uh, H bar is equal to 2 pi I tau? And let's first look when uh, H bar is actually 2 pi I over N. So again, this is checked numerically. And what we have uh, is that 1 over N, F of 1 over N, depending on whether you take N positive or negative, look like the Laplace transform in one direction or in the other, but there is a correction. And what is a zero? A zero is simply e to the, uh, the exponential. So e zero of x is e two pi i x. So it's not exactly the same. There is something, uh, something more. OK. And uh, um, now you may wonder, well, what uh, if uh, instead of 1 over n, uh, maybe I just put tau, because at the end of the day, I want my f of tau for tau rational. And if you do that, actually, again, numerically, you see that they do not match. So if you replace everywhere 1 over n by tau, uh, and you start testing this equality, you will see that there's something completely different. So it seems only this written in this way, it's only valid for one over n. And you will see in a while also um, why it's true. In a sense, this is related to the, to the quantum modularity of f tau. So OK, it's kind of strange. And so let's try to look better of, of what quantum modularity is telling us. So in fact, um, we have the following. Uh, so we, we can actually simply compute this. Uh, uh, check this um, uh, expression over there. So in particular, remember that the co-cycle was defined in this way. You take the difference of the two. And now, um, if you do that, again, you can check numerically, but in a way I will tell you also how do you obtain this. You have that this co-cycle for tau, uh, like uh, bigger than minus one half uh, and not zero, has this expression. And what does it mean? Now maybe I should. E, what is E1? E1 is just uh, a way to rewrite uh, uh, the Laplace transform. So it's just integral from 0 to plus infinity, exponential of minus 2 pi t dt t plus ax. So it's just a, a way to rewrite the Laplace transform, uh, but this is somehow related to the um, uh, exponential integral uh, function. OK. so. Um, you have this expression, but what is interesting in our sense, how do you prove it if you believe con the previous conjecture? And the idea is the following. Um, you first look at this expression for h, but with tau equal to 1 over n. So you rewrite exactly the same thing, putting instead of tau, 1 over n. And then you use uh, the previous expression for f tau in written in terms of 1 over n. You will get exactly what is written there with tau replaced by 1 over n. But in fact, uh, the surprise, uh, at least to me, is that if you now uh, use tau, whatever um, rational number, now this is correctly numerically, looks numerically correct. So in a sense, I use a conjecture that only is true for 1 over n, in a sense. But if I go back to tau, that's work nicely. And OK, in fact, uh, um, even more, you can actually playing a bit with this uh, uh, formula, again, numerically check uh, and obtain the following uh, uh, expression. So now this look, in a sense, much nicer. And uh, uh, in particular, what I learned from this formula is that my tau f tau is uh, uh, a kind of Laplace transform. I here, plus and minus is just because tau can be positive or negative. So mm -hmm. I put uh, either plus or minus depending on the sign of, on the sign of tau. But uh, you have this extra uh, thing here, which in a sense come from there. And what is nice uh, is also that uh, 
Everything here comes from the previous conjecture, the one with the f of 1 over n. But in fact, uh, you can also assume this to be your main conjecture. And uh, if you uh, replace uh, tau with 1 over n, you will get back uh, uh, the previous uh, one. So in a sense, this term here will correspond uh, um, to what before was uh, the terms with a not, the other correction. So maybe I should just move. OK, here before, for 1 over n, you had this e0, so this exponential uh, of 2 pi i times n factor. And the reason why it was not working in this way is because, in fact, uh, if you put back uh, any rational, the formula became different. And what I, I mean, and to, to fit it uh, in my previous uh, kind of uh, statement uh, attempt, uh, I do not, I mean, I would like to write it uh, as uh, um, a Laplace transform, maybe generalize with a different counter. But the point is that I don't see why the right hand side can be uh, something like that, like uh, with a media resummation type of thing. So may maybe it is, maybe I have to do slump is slightly different. I mean, I don't know yet. So far, this formula, is, it's telling me that I have this, uh, this extra correction. But it really comes from the mo quantum modularity. Because it's like the different of the, I mean, yeah, it, it comes from the definition of the cocycle in a sense. OK. <coughs> So if there are no questions about this example, I will go on with the other two. F, could you remind what is F? Yes, uh, F was defined using my uh, series, so the sigma Q. So F of tau was Q, or maybe just write E, to the 2 pi i tau divided by 24 times the series sigma Q, with Q is E to the 2 pi i tau. And yeah, sigma q was a series involving Pocammer, uh, Q-Pocammer. Yeah, maybe we just, uh, uh, you didn't draw, but one can, this, uh, uh, in the version series is rational coefficients that you make in the bar gap, mm -hmm. actually appears in, uh, in one of this formula, it's what a very simple one-dimensional formal integral which I introduced in my Ah, yes, okay. yes. It's uh, so one of the simple sure? yes, uh, uh, dialogue, uh, quantum uh, dialogue multiplied by some, some power of log, the square of log. Yeah, yeah. yeah, indeed. I mean, th the reason why we got uh, to this example was because we were simplifying uh, yeah, one of the one f the formula Maxim gave in his last talk. Yeah, kind of fake three-dimensional manifold, yeah. Let's say, yeah. Okay, so let's go with the uh, other example, which, okay, yes. It's the conservative the gear power um, Q series. OK, so again, here a bit, a quick recap of also, this is also an example in which we know there is a quantum modular form. So the idea is you uh, Maxim actually consider first this uh, uh, Q series. Now, this time, this is not uh, convergent either in the unique disk or either inside or outside the unique disk. And uh, um, but uh, it makes sense, it is well defined at when Q it's a root of unity because essentially the series terminate. And what Zagir uh, noticed, uh, actually proved, is uh, what he called the strange identity in his paper about uh, Vasiliev invariant. So the statement here is that this uh, uh, Q series is actually equal to something which is on the right hand side, but the right hand side now is a convergent series in the unit disk. So what does this thing mean is that if you take the um, radial limit on the right hand side, you will get uh, uh, something convergent to this uh, power series. And OK, here the coefficient on the right hand side um, are given by this uh, character here. So this chi n is written over there. So this is uh, our Q series. Uh, and in fact, what uh, uh, Vagier also proved is that if you define, again, f from uh, q to c in the following way, so you just add a q to the uh, 1 over 24, and I always uh, use this uh, definition for the q, then uh, um, this f tau satisfy, again, the following uh, um, relation. So uh, this is the simplest one if you just put, uh, if you just translate tau 
uh, you said tau in tau plus one in this formula. This is more interesting. Now here the cocycle is defined by taking f of tau, and then you have here something that you see uh, it's fractional. I mean, it has this fractional power, f of mi oh, minus uh, uh, one over tau, and uh, uh, it's uh, as it should be real analytic except, except the origin where this is a problem as a problem. Okay, so as you may guess, now this will be uh, an example. This is an example when you have a, a um, non-integer weight. But here tau is only rational. Tau is only rational, yeah. Uh, yes, but h actually uh, it's defined over c over r. Sorry, no c. Okay, and uh, um, so now the question is where again? This is fine, but let's look for uh, something uh, divergent our divergent power series, which was actually considered uh, first by Kostin and Garufalidis. So as we did before, uh, this series, you just replace 2 pi i tau by a generic complex uh, h bar parameter. Again, uh, this uh, uh, as rational coefficient, uh, but this, in this case, uh, uh, we are happier because the coefficient has a closed formula. And this was already proved in the paper by Zagier. And so what Karufalidis and Konsti did was, OK, let's compute the Borel transform of this uh, uh, function here, the, the, of this divergent series. And the first thing they, they prove is that the uh, Borel transform has this expression. So in particular, you see it has fractional uh, power singularity. And uh, um, you also see the position of the uh, singularity, which will be at this k square pi square over 6. And if you compute the discontinuity, what you get is the following expression. So, okay, here there is an h bar uh, with some fractional power, but in fact, uh, this will be uh, the Stokes constant. Okay, and okay is just what was before. So, this is another example of my of what I was defining modular resurgence um, structure because the singularity are all real and actually uh, real positive. Um, so you have your, your tower of singularity and uh, uh, these uh, k uh, times uh, um, k, k, I didn't say it before, but this is related to the dead and kineta function. Sorry, what is xi? Could you recall just? Where is uh, What is xi k? Kai. 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 Oh, kai. Ah, kai, sorry, yes, it's... It's, it's uh, the previous... It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's this one, yes. Ah, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And in particular, if I, if you, so, okay, let me just, in fact, uh, you can actually rewrite this coefficient and you can see the gamma appearing. So this gamma of uh, n plus three half as well as here. And uh, again, from the two formula, as I was just saying, uh, you see where are the singularity and where it, uh, what are the Stokes constant. So it's again an example, as I was saying, and in this case, you know where it, there is a quantum modular form. But in fact, what uh, I mean, the main interesting aspect, I mean, what is really interesting in this story is that now, if you take what is called the media resummation, you will get back exactly your f tau. And this is non-numeric, nothing, everything is precise. And uh, here I just rewrite, uh, so if you want, uh, uh, this sum of, on the right, on the left hand side, is this uh, uh, median resummation, which is exactly of the type uh, um, William was saying yes, was considering yesterday. So you have these two paths, uh, and another way to think of it uh, is that you, uh, as William was saying, you take the path uh, which is downstairs, you move it uh, above, and doing that, uh, you will. Um, uh, collect all the residue uh, from the singularity. So in this example, you see that in fact uh, uh, is the media resummation that works uh, as also yesterday was claiming, uh, William was claiming. But yeah, I have the suspicion that it's somehow it's related uh, to the fact that you have this fractional modular form. I think that for integer may be different, the, the function that you have to consider. I don't know. But okay, yeah. So this is a kind of, th this was the other example. And again, everything is exact. So you don't have really to do any uh, numerics or nothing. 
And uh, maybe the other comment I should say is that in order to prove this, uh, they actually also use uh, um, the strange identity of Zagir. So once you have the strange identity and uh, more or less what was in the previous slide, uh, you can actually realize that this is uh, uh, equal to F tau. So yeah, in that case, actually, you also use the, the strange identity, which in general, maybe we don't have. OK. So now, uh, if there are no, no questions about the example, I will go on to the last one, which is the one in which is the one in progress also with Claudia. So actually what I'm going to present in this last example is an example in which we don't have now a quantum modular form on the nose. So we don't know whether there will be or not, but we will see that we have this uh, modular uh, resurgence structure. And so what we are trying to do with Claudia is to construct the quantum modular form. Okay. So where does this, uh, and actually this example uh, come from, from something that has nothing to do maybe with the series we see this week, uh, with knots invariants and so on. So uh, Claudia in, in her paper uh, consider this trace of quantum mechanical operator. And here I'm just looking uh, on the example of local P2. So exactly the example that Pierrick was discussing before. So what she computed is this uh, expression where you have uh, a bunch of um, Q series and also Q tilde series. Okay, and uh, um, in particular, so already from there, you can consider, th these are well defined both as Q and Q tilde series. But in fact, uh, uh, in order to get uh, these uh, divergent series, she considered two limits. The limit uh, at one, Q tilde going to one or Q, uh, Q or Q tilde going to one and she gets two divergent series uh, in the parameter h bar. And here I have to say that uh, I keep go, uh, using my convention h bar equal to 2 pi i tau, but in fact, uh, in our paper, the convention is slightly different. And this because h bar, it's uh, um, a physical parameter. So it's reasonable to have it uh, uh, like parameterized in a different way with respect to tau. So I just change it in this way because then we will see um, more clearly like the, the parallel with my convention as my definition as before. But okay, if you look at the paper, it's slightly different. Uh, and so this also means that uh, somehow um, my H bar is not anymore the physical parameter. And these two limits that uh, uh, we have here, again, actually have a physical meaning and they correspond to two different points on the modular space of the local Calabiao. Okay, but so now, we just look at the, Q, uh, the divergent series, which, has, which are inside of this exponential. Uh, sorry, so we have three equalities with trace of rule. So uh, the first is the function is defined this way, and, yeah. this, and the last two uh, are the limit. The limit so are asymptotic expansions. Yes, that's Q. Yeah. So they are not equalities. Uh, no, sorry. Okay. So asymptotic <laughs> expansion as h bar tends to zero or infinity. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Okay, and uh, I mean, this case is nice because again, we have closed formula for the coefficient so coming from the, the Pokhammer. So yeah, everything is exact. Okay, so now here I just put, uh, uh, all, I mean, many of the results that Claudia uh, proved uh, and uh, only the one that uh, in a sense I need. So um, we consider this divergent series, this is a one at zero. So this is why I have this G naught. The value of Bernoulli polynomial, so product of two values of Bernoulli. Ah, no, sorry. This is the Bernoulli uh, number, and this is the Bernoulli polynomial computed at, yes. <laughs> they are a bit too close, yeah. Um, okay, so the singularity in this case lies on this uh, uh, 4 pi square k, and uh, um, the Stokes constant satisfy, uh, I mean, uh, uh, gives you an L function, which in this case is this product of the Riemann zeta and uh, uh, the Dirichlet L series associated to this character, shifted by one, okay? And uh, um, in particular, she, she also uh, proved that uh, locally, at, uh, close to each singularity, the Borel transform has the following expression. So in particular, it's a simple uh, resurgence structure you see that you have no other correction and the singularity are exactly at this rho k and uh, the Stokes constant, as I said, are the sk. 
Uh, so in particular, you say that Barrett transform is analytic function, and row case are all of its singularities. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, and moreover, uh, so okay, in particular, this is a resurgent, uh, um, um, not resurgent, but a, a modular resurgent structure. And moreover, what she observed is that you can have, a, you can rewrite the coefficient in the following way. So exactly uh, the way I was writing at the beginning. This is what she called the exact large order relation, and this comes from the fact that you don't have other series attached to the log. So since you have only this one. Uh, this became an exact large order relation. Otherwise, you may have got more coefficient. And computing the discontinuity, now this uh, rho k, um, you have them only on one on the real axis, on the positive real axis. So if you compute the, discontinu the discontinuity, um, you will get uh, the same type of trans-series expansion where you have the constant and the SK and the rho k divided by h bar. But you see again that this is kind of proportional to uh, the q tilde, a q tilde series. And what is this q tilde series is actually part of what we have uh, uh, at the very beginning. So the initi initially the trace uh, as two q oops, here, yes, as two q series, you get uh, exactly uh, this one. Over there, and there is the log because the series I'm considering has a log. I, I took the log of the original one. So you have this nice expression, and for the other series, the one at infinity, it's kind of the same. So again, uh, you have this nice exact expression for the coefficient, and uh, uh, the Borel singularity are uh, this point over there. And the Stokes constant, again, satisfy kind of the same um, relation. In, I mean, it's more or less the same uh, L function, but shifted. You have just uh, L of S and the Riemann zeta at S plus 1. And uh, uh, locally, again, you see simple singularity, no other term. And uh, yeah, Stokes constant at SK and they're OK. So in particular, you have, again, an example of this uh, uh, modular resurgent uh, structure. And uh, thanks to the fact that you don't have uh, any other series, you have this exact larger the relation, which now, OK, you have uh, uh, this gamma of 2n minus 1, but still an uh, integer. And uh, if you compute the discontinuity, you get uh, this log. Uh, so the, the, this log where you have the other two q series. Because now we are at infinity, and so we see uh, the Q series, ah, sorry, here there is a typo, I think, uh, shouldn't be divided by H bar, but multiplied by H bar, because it's the one at uh, infinity. But okay. And uh, um, so now, I mean, it's still kind of in progress to figure it out uh, uh, what is the quantum modular form in this case, so if there is a quantum modular form. And the expectation is that uh, ah, so maybe it should be related uh, with this difference of logarithm. So that this, this difference of logarithm should satisfy um, the same type of uh, transformation I was writing before. But again, it's not in this case, uh, uh, it's not clear whether the um, medium Borel summation will produce uh, the, the L function you want. <coughs> so yeah, it's kind of open so far. <laughs> OK. So yeah, I think. I'm going to finish maybe a little bit earlier, but it's fine. <laughs> so summarizing. <laughs> uh, OK, now the, the point I want to make is, uh, to want to make is that uh, we ha I have introduced uh, a bit naively this uh, modular resurgent uh, structure. But I think that uh, um, it seems promising, at least in some example, and even thinking about William talk uh, uh, more generally, to uh, produce uh, some quantum modular form. So in uh, thinking about the example of Konsevich, Taguier, and William, it seems that this general generalized Laplace transform uh, should actually be the median Laplace resummation, because this is the theorem that we have uh, in some example. But I think for what I call simple modular resurgent function, so the one when you have either simple pore or log, it may be different. So it may not work exactly as in the previous class. And uh, 
yeah, okay. Of course, I mean, this is kind of uh, maybe a naive approach, uh, but uh, I, it seems that uh, in a sense, uh, all these uh, quantum modular property can be already encoded at the level of the resurgent structure of the divergent series. So we have seen examples so far where maybe one expects quantum modularity also for other reasons, like if you have this not invariant, there are very uh, good conjecture in which, uh, okay, mm -hmm. that tell you that there must be some quantum modularity, and this is what William, uh, Jon, and David and collaborator were approved. But from my point of view, it seems that also resurgence amount knows of that. So even like uh, it's just something which you, which is encoded at the level of the series, and the point is how to uh, it's understanding which type of Laplace transform you have to consider to extract the information, so to really get the the quantum modularity, and yeah, that's uh, <laughs> what I want to say. Thanks. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Yeah, yeah. maybe a bit particular. Your last example, these traces, are they related to the series which appeared in the previous talk, generating series? To Perica? A uh, good question. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know if it's exactly the same for. He has uh, this uh, expression for uh, when you want to apply WKB, but uh, I don't think it's uh, defined in the same way. Maybe you, you can comment, Claudia, as well. But yeah, and this is. This trace comes from uh, um, inverting the operator that comes from quantizing the mirror curve, which he was showing. And the partition function is supposed to be killed by the operator defined by the quantum. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. But I think, I think the series are like slightly differ different. Yes. Like in one, like the trace of these operators. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other one was about like uh, the one I was considering was that the WKB solution of the mm -hmm. of the different structures. So yeah, I think probably there should be some relation. This is not fully clear to me. Mm -hmm. the, is that uh, the orbital point? Uh, it's either h bar zero or infinity. No, no I mean in the yeah. in terms of the modular space of. Ah. P2. Is no, that a no. generic... Uh, you should be the conifold. So when you take h bar going to infinity, that corresponds to the conifold uh, okay. um, expansion. And if you take h bar going to, to zero instead, you're looking at the okay. large uh, radius. Mm -hmm. okay. But the modulus of P2 is kept arbitrary. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are points in moduli space. Yeah, I understand. But you're talking about h bar. I'm talking about the uh, the, the complex modulus of the mirror of P2. There's, there's one complex modulus. <coughs> Isn't the Q? And Isn't related to the Q? Ah, okay. I guess. What okay. before was that that tau or something the T in the Rick talk or something like that? Okay. So then, okay, maybe maybe we can do it. We can talk to it. Yes, uh, maybe a very nice question. Y you have uh, some L function associated to this uh, quantum modular form. Do you have some conjecture if this is comes comes from some algebraic geometry or some some motive? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. And the only thing, so in the example considered by um, uh, maybe William also in the one of conservative tag here, you see that it is a Dirichlet L function. But like in the example of Calder, you have this product. Uh, the other one, you have an Artinel function. So I don't know whether all these things can, yeah. Mm, I don't have like a general uh, picture for yeah, which algebraic geometry should correspond. Or motive, yeah. Okay, no more questions. Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> <laughs>